Hey, good Friday to you on the uh, start of this Memorial Day uh, three-day weekend for many folks as we celebrate, not celebrate, but we, we remember our servicemen and women who gave their lives to our country on this coming Monday. The forecast looks to be absolutely amazing overall. We are still looking at cloudiness coming in tomorrow morning that could be a while to clear out. That will bring cooler temperatures than what we're seeing today. Of course, Portland City Fair kicks off this evening. It's going to be clear skies, very summer-like conditions for that event. 81 currently. I'm coming to you at 2.15 in the afternoon. So these are the 2 p.m. temps. It was 81, 81, 81, Portland, Salem, Vancouver. So mid-80s looks to be a good bet. Here's a Tillamook head, the bottom of it, <laughs> kind of clouded over, right? That's the camera at Gearhart by the Sea Resort looking to the south. Of course, Seaside's right there. So the north coast, including up in Astoria, still overcast. Here's Lincoln County. This is the Channel House camera. It sits right on the water right adjacent to the bay right there, looking back to the north at 101 in downtown Depot Bay. It's looked like this all day, some fog, low clouds on the hill and overcast. Um, I keep thinking the coast is gonna clear out at some point this afternoon, but so far no go. So if you are getting ready to hop in your car and get to the beach at some point later today, maybe you find clouds and it will certainly be cloudy at the coast for a good portion of tomorrow. Now, haven't mentioned the gorge, but I will now because this is what we're looking at. This is why I'm coming to you early. Here's Hood River, there's the Dalles. We've got thunderstorm activity just north of the Columbia River and, and not unusual, but typically we see storms hitting the Cascades and moving northward, right? Northward into the gorge, northward into Washington. This time around, because there's a low out here and the circulation's coming around counterclockwise, the storms have been firing in Washington and then dropping to the south. So these are coming from Washington southward across the Columbia into uh, Oregon, starting to see some thunderstorms fire up around Mount Hood as well. Here's the lightning again. I grabbed these images at 2.05 this afternoon. Detecting lightning with the storms that are just north of Hood River and near the Dalles. A lot of lightning still in Idaho and off to the east. And we may start to see some thunderstorms pop, meaning lightning detected around Mount Hood. So um, the Weather Service hasn't put out any watchers or warnings for any of this, but where you see the red, that's a good bet of that these storms are producing some hail. They're obviously producing big time, heavy convective rain rates. And remember, we have, we've seen several times in the last few weeks, these storms dump an inch of rain in under an hour. So that's potential, you know, rapid flash flooding for the immediate areas under these storms. The potential hail, the dangerous lightning is being detected. And so far these storms, and I think this would be the same, looking at some gusty winds, but probably not much more than 30, or 35 miles per hour. The main threat seems to be the lightning and, and the heavy, heavy rain coming down. This is courtesy of KGW TV. This was their Futurecast model, which seems to be a, uh, showing a good handle on the situation. This is 5 p.m., so we know these storms are gonna threaten earlier than that. But this does show in this bullseye area where radar is confirming we're now getting activity, these storms coming from Washington, crossing the gorge, moving down toward Mount Hood. So. Again, courtesy of KGW-TV, the Futurecast modeling, having a good handle on that situation. But I want to stick real quick with this Futurecast model and get you into the weekend upcoming. So this is Saturday morning. So obviously we were in the 80s yesterday. We're in the mid-80s today, it looks like, for highs. Tomorrow you wake up, not only a low marine cloud deck, but some mid-level cloudiness as well. So this is certainly a sign that we will be cooling off. It's not a guarantee if the coast clears out tomorrow. It's not a guarantee you folks do at the beach today. Portland and Salem and Vancouver, probably in Longview, probably a good bet that it will still be cloudy in more areas than not at noon on Saturday, and then eventually seeing the clouds thin and break up. Um, but if we still have you know cloudy skies going into the afternoon, we may struggle to get up to 70 tomorrow. So there's your cool off. Best bet for some patchy mist or drizzle in the morning hours will be you folks that live along the coast. We'll keep an eye on that. Sunday morning, by the way, for your holiday weekend, I think there could be some early clouds, especially at the beach, but odds look to favor that we'll clear out of those. And then by the time we get to Memorial Day Monday, we expect generally just a mostly sunny day across the area. This cooler weather will end the storm threat. So we have this thunderstorms I'm showing you right now, mainly threatening the gorge and around Mount Hood. I do not see a storm threat tomorrow's will be much more stable with the cooler westerly flow pattern coming in. I thought real quick I'd keep you updated on the super typhoon out in the Pacific. This is uh, Mawar, and here's the latest track. So Guam is way back here, 
This is still a huge super typhoon. In fact, when I grabbed this image about an hour ago, the winds around the eye of the storm at 165 miles per hour, we don't get hurricanes or typhoons, or we call them cyclones in the Indian Ocean, just different names for different ocean basins, that go above 170, 75 very often. This storm did reach that earlier in the week, 165 now. Now this is encouraging depending on where you are, where your concerns are. But this shows next Wednesday the storm track curving up to the north. So if that's the case, maybe this would spare Taiwan, and there's Taipei. Maybe it would stay well north of the Philippines. There's Manila. But remember, there is Japan up here. So this is Wednesday of next week, still out over open waters. We'll keep you updated on uh, what that super typhoon is doing. Again, the one that hit Guam with the eye wall staying just to the north side of that island. Uh, I thought, because we're getting you know, closer to June, I would take some time and update you on what all the outlooks are showing, and then I'll get you to the seven days. So this, you know, May is coming to an end, but here's the updated average for our month that we're wrapping up soon of the upper flow pattern. Has a set of 570 mile, 570 millibar, I'm still talking typhoons, 570 millibar pressure height. Notice the, the ridging up in Canada. This hot ridge was across the western provinces, and it's being uh, the primary blame, if you will, for all those fires that have been burning up there. Now, we do know without question that May is going to average above normal. Now, keep in mind, 570 millibar pressure height. So let's look at June. Here's June, 571 millibar pressure height. You would expect June to be warmer than May, but the pressure height's pretty even. Um, now, keep in mind, May well above normal, so now we're trying to figure out June. Uh, tropping over California, there is some ridging again taking place according to this model. This is the American, what they call the uh, climate forecast system model. There is some ridging up in Canada. That's not going to do the fire situation any favors there. And maybe we feed off of some of that, so we're kind of in the middle. So I, I do believe that we will either see temperatures near normal to above. I will tell you the outlooks from the National Weather Service are now going above normal for the month of June, but we're kind of in the middle. So there's at least a chance that we would be near normal, okay? So we'll keep an eye on June, but, but clearly that could kind of go either way. I was thinking June will be cooler. Now we're kind of in the middle. So let's say June is normal at the coldest, and at the warmest it's above normal. Here's July. 576 millibar. So some tropping off the west coast. That big ridge is now moving eastward up in Canada toward the Hudson Bay. And we've got a hot ridge building over Texas and Wyoming and up into the Plain States. But we're kind of on the outside of all that. So there's no signs here, pardon me, that July would be hot. We'll go near normal. I, I wish I would have gone, I think odds are favoring that June could be above normal. But, but July, I don't see any signs of really hot weather. Let's go to August. Now the, the pressure height's a little bit higher, 576, but still kind of tropping, and the, the ridge pattern is still over the Hudson Bay and actually sliding a little bit more to the east. So there's really no signs of any heat dome or anything like that building. So at the warmest, we would go near normal. So I think, uh, and let me show you one more month. Here's September, and then I'll make a couple comments. All right, here's September coming up. Let's see here. Now we've got ridging back over the western provinces of Canada, well up in the northern Canada. Look at that. Our pressure height holding pretty warm for September of 574. So you would think that has a good chance to be above normal. So if I can rewrite my own graphics a little bit. There's reason to believe that June is going to at least be normal. I was saying cooler than normal, but now at least normal, with evidence kind of pushing towards maybe June's going to average hotter than normal. But there are no signs on the models I just showed you that July is going to go on to be super hot. There are no signs August is going to go on to be super hot. Maybe those months will average out normal. September does look like we could run some 90-degree weather and be hotter than normal as kids get back into school and that type of thing. So that is kind of an update right now on what the model outlooks are showing. And remember this. As we transition into El Nino in the coming couple of months of June going into July, I showed you this some time ago. These are summers since 2000. If you keep track of the Enso cycle, La Nina since 2000, La Nina summers about 14, 9 degree days. Neutral has been about the same 15. But El Nino tends to, uh, to uh, trend a little bit higher at 20. And if you look at summers that are doing what we're doing this summer, expected to go from neutral to El Nino transition, you get the highest possible bullseye of 23, 9 degree days. So all of that 
would mean, well, pretty good bet we're going to have our fair share of 90 degree heat left, right? Now, keep in mind, keep in mind we've already had five 90 degree days, so we're starting to rack them up. Oh boy, let me see here. I think I may have lost my internet connection. No, here it is. It's back. Okay, I showed you this graphic some time ago. Neutral to developing El Nino, my projection was we'd be somewhere in the 20 to 24 degree, 20 to 24 total days of 90 degree heat. The average since 2000 for all ENSO cycles put together is 16. So the average is 16. We're going above that. We're going 20 to 24. We've already had five, which means we'd almost have to have a cool summer not to hit 20. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but with all that said, the outlooks are hopeful that we won't get into any just absolutely carried away hot weather. So fingers across, fingers across, fingers across. I like to be optimistic. Mostly sunny, 86 this afternoon. The clouds, maybe some early drizzle tomorrow, 72. Slow clearing. Sunday clouds to more rapid clearing, 75. Memorial Day looks great. Mostly sunny to 78 or 80. And then still dry on back to work Tuesday and still comfortable in the 70s on Wednesday and Thursday. My weather site where you can always check my updated seven-day forecast, that's my personal work, is portlandweather.com. Uh, thank you for using this YouTube channel. Hope you've hit subscribe. Hope you've told some friends to check it out. Uh, don't forget those storms are now threatening the Dalles and Hood River. The rest of us, I think, will be pretty much dry this evening. And then we'll have that cool down with the marine uh, clouds coming in.